Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check some of the latest battery chargers by ISDT. In this video I'm going to briefly show you each charger and go over its features and specs and also announce a small giveaway sponsored by Banggood who are currently celebrating their 15th anniversary. Let's start with the Q6 Nano and Q8 DC battery chargers. As far as I know, the Q6 Nano is the cheapest battery charger by ISDT. It features a small color LCD screen, will enable you to charge up to 6S batteries, it supports a DC input voltage of between 10 to 30 volts, its maximum output current is 8 amperes, and its maximum output power is 200 watts. Now I've got the Q6 Nano charger powered up, and just like the rest of the chargers that I'm going to show you, the user interface is pretty convenient and you are going to feel pretty much at home in case you have previous experience with ISDT chargers or other similar chargers. The main downside of this compact charger, in my opinion, is that this navigation button is not very convenient. So, for example, when trying to set a settings, you will find it a little bit cumbersome to press the center button and sometimes when you want to press the center button, you actually press the top button and etc. So the capacitive navigation buttons of the rest of the chargers that I'm going to show you are much more convenient. This issue can be a deal breaker for some, including me, but in case you can ignore it and you are looking for a cheap and compact field battery charger, the Q6 Nano is something that you can consider. As for the Q8 smart battery charger, it features a much bigger color LCD screen in comparison to the Q6 Nano. It will enable you to charge up to 8S batteries. It supports a DC input voltage of between 10 to 32 volts. Its maximum output current is 20 amperes and its maximum output power is 500 watts. In addition, for extra $20, you can get the max version of the Q8 charger. It has a maximum output current of 30 amperes and a maximum output power of 1000 watts. Now I've got the Q8 charger powered up. Navigating between the different options is done using these capacitive touch buttons. Long pressing the center button is going to take you to the system settings where you'll be able to adjust the different options. Short pressing it is going to take you to the task settings where you'll be able to charge, discharge, store charge and destroy your batteries and also use the battery charger as a DC power supply. In order to go back to the previous menu, you can simply long press the center button. So overall, the Q8 is a very compact but yet powerful charger. It can be a pretty good option for a field battery charger or even for a home charger in case you charge multiple batteries using a parallel charging board. And just like the Q6 Nano, its user interface is very easy and simple to use but using the capacitive buttons makes it much more user-friendly than the Q6 Nano. Moving on to the ISDT P30, a very powerful DC-powered battery charger. It will enable you to charge up to two 8-cell batteries simultaneously. Its supported DC input voltage is between 10 to 34 volts, the maximum current per channel is 30 amperes, the maximum output power per channel is 1000 watts, and in synchronous mode, when using both channels together, the maximum output power is 1500 watts. In addition, it features a USB connector for charging your mobile devices, a USB Type-C connector for updating its firmware, and it is powered using an XT90 battery connector. In case you would like to power it using a battery with an XT60 battery connector, you can do so as it comes with the appropriate adapter. Here you can see what it looks like when the P30 charger is powered up. On the center of the charger you can find a very big color LCD screen. It is not a touch screen and navigating between the different options is done using the three capacitive buttons which are located on each side of the charger and control the charging procedure of each channel. In order to enter the settings menu you need to press both buttons simultaneously and over here you'll be able to navigate between the different options by either pressing the capacitive button on the top or bottom side or by scrolling your finger in the following manner. So you can enter over here the settings menu, adjust the different options and you can also enable the wireless feature as this charger features a built-in Bluetooth connection 
which will enable you to control it using the ISDT Go app. So using it, you'll be able to monitor the charging procedure and configure the charger. As for charging a battery, it is done by long pressing the center button next to the channel that you would like to use. In case you would like to charge both channels using the same settings, you can enter the advanced menu by long pressing both center buttons simultaneously. And then over here, you can select the dual task option. So both batteries are going to be charged using the same settings. In case you would like to parallel charge a single battery using both channels, you will need to obtain an adapter and only then the option is going to be enabled. Then the maximum output power of both channels simultaneously is going to be 1500 watts. In case you would like to use this charger as a DC power supply, you can enter the advanced settings menu and then over here select the DC power channel 1 option. So overall, with the maximum output power per channel of 1000 watts and the ability to charge two 8 cells batteries simultaneously, the P30 is definitely a very powerful charger. However, in my opinion, in case you are in the market for such a charger and you don't need the Bluetooth connectivity option and the ability to use both channels simultaneously in order to achieve a maximum output power of 1500 watts, a better option might be to purchase two Q8 Max battery chargers as it is going to be cheaper since the P30 costs about $200 and the Q8 Max currently costs $90 so two chargers will cost you $180 and it will also be more travel friendly because two Q8 Max battery chargers weigh less than the P30 charger and will also add some redundancy in case one of the chargers goes bad. Moving on to the K1 and K2 AC-DC battery chargers. On both chargers, the supported AC input voltage is between 100 and 240 volts and the supported DC input voltage is between 10 to 30 volts. These are actually very similar chargers and the main difference between them besides the size of the screen and the dedicated buttons for controlling each channel on the K2 is the output current and power per channel as on the K1, it is 10 amperes per channel and 100 watts on AC and 250 watts on DC. And the K2 doubles these values. So the maximum output current per channel is 20 amperes and the maximum output power per channel is 200 watts on AC and 500 watts on DC. In addition, both chargers will enable you to charge up to two 6S batteries simultaneously. And between the XT60 battery connectors, you can find a USB Type-C port, which will enable you to upgrade the firmware of the charger and also charge your mobile devices. Now, as you can see, I've got both chargers powered up. As I mentioned before, the K2 features dedicated buttons for each channel, whereas on the K1, the up and down buttons are shared between them. In order to select the channel and start charging a battery, on the K2, you'll need to long press the center button next to the channel that you would like to use. And on the K1, simply long press the channel 1 or channel 2 buttons. So for example, if I want to use channel 1, I need to long press these buttons. And now under the task setting, you can select the settings that you would like to use and start charging a battery. As for entering the advanced menu, on the K1, it is done by long pressing the channel 1 and channel 2 together and on the K2, by long pressing the two center buttons. Under this menu, on both chargers, you'll be able to perform a dual task operation, which means that the batteries that are connected to channel 1 and channel 2 are going to be charged with the same settings. You can also perform a parallel task operation, which means that using a Y-shaped adapter, you'll be able to charge a single battery using both ports, and then the maximum output power on the K2 is going to be 800 watts, and the maximum output current is 35 amperes, and on the K1, the maximum output power is going to be 400 watts, and the maximum output current 16 amperes. In addition, under the advanced menu, you can find an option to use the charger as a power supply and enter the settings menu. So overall, both K1 and K2 are pretty advanced, but still very easy to use, well-priced AC-DC battery chargers. 
Personally, I prefer ACDC chargers because I normally charge my batteries at home, but I still would like to have the option to charge my batteries on the go. If I had to choose between them, I prefer the K2 over the K1, simply for the reason that its buttons work much better, and in terms of value for money, I think that the K1 is going to provide you with a very good value for money, as currently it is priced around $100, and the K2 costs around $140. So if you don't need the extra output power of the K2, the K1 is probably going to be a better option, especially if you are on the budget. But if you can afford it, I would recommend to spend the extra $40 on the K2, simply because it is more convenient to use. Now, by the way, as I mentioned before, on both chargers, you'll be able to charge your mobile devices using a USB Type-C connector, However, the maximum output current is 2 amperes, so it will be great if on the next versions of these chargers, ISDT are going to add a fast charging support. Moving on to the ISDT C4 EVO. This USB Type-C powered battery charger is going to enable you to charge up to 4 AA or AAA batteries and 2 bigger batteries which are in the size of between 16650 up to 21700 which of course includes the very popular size of 18650. Once the charger is powered up, you'll be able to enter the settings menu by long pressing the center button. And in order to charge a battery, you'll need to insert it to its position, and then you'll be able to choose the chemistry of the battery, which can also be determined automatically. Choose the task, so you can either charge or destroy the battery, and you can set the current, which can be set between 3 amperes all the way down to 0.1 amperes, and it can also be determined automatically. Once the charging procedure has started, you can move between the channels by short pressing the up and down buttons, and you can monitor the battery voltage, the current, and the total amount of milliampere hour that the battery was charged with. Now while the C4 EVO is a pretty advanced and capable battery charger, I've decided to not get into too many technical details, simply because, in my opinion, for most hobby grade users that occasionally charge lithium ion batteries, it is going to be sufficient to use such an adapter that will enable you to charge lithium ion batteries externally using a normal LiPo battery charger. However, in case you are an advanced user that frequently tests and charge lithium ion on similar batteries, the C4 EVO is something that you might want to check out. Anyway, in this video, I went over some of the latest battery chargers from ISDT, a very reliable company which has been around for quite a while now. In case you're in the market for a new battery charger, hopefully one of these chargers is the right one for you, and if not, or in case you have any questions about your next battery charger, feel free to let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll do my best to help you out. As for the giveaway, the prize is the ISDT Q6 Nano, which is going to be directly sent to the winner by Banggood, who are currently celebrating their 15th anniversary. In the description box down below, you can find all the relevant promotional links, and in order to participate in the giveaway, first you need to make sure that you are publicly subscribed to my channel, and leave a comment down below that contains the code which you can find in the coupon list which is also linked down below. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I wish you all good luck in the giveaway in case you would like to participate. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.